come back. Now I'll finish skinning all the rest of the objects of the character. As you see, these objects belong to the head of the character, therefore they will be only deformed by the armature modifier and not the mesh deform modifier. So first I'll do the teeth, I'm gonna add an armature modifier, I'm gonna add blend rig as the target of that armature modifier, and I can go to weight painting mode. I will enable the X mirror option, and then I'll just select one of the deformation bones of the teeth and I'll roughly paint it over the mesh. By doing this, you can see that the corresponding vertex group is created when I paint over the mesh. So, instead of painting this manually, I'm gonna go into edit mode and I'm going to assign the weights in there. So I'll check where the division of the two deformation bones of the teeth is and then I'll select the corresponding teeth and I'll press the assign button. Then I'll go to the other side and I'll roughly select the vertices and with Control L all the rest of the geometry is selected and then I can assign it to the vertex group of the right bone. Now I'll do the same thing with the front bone, so I'll paint it and then I'll go into edit mode and select the objects and press the assign button. So you see that now the lower teeth are already skinned and ready to be used. So now I'll go on and do the exact same thing with the upper teeth. I paint in weight painting mode, then I go into edit mode, roughly select the vertices, Control L to select the rest of the geometry and then press the assign button with the corresponding vertex group selected. So, now that the teeth are skinned, I'll join the geometry to the geometry of the face. I had not done this before, because it would have been a bit tedious to have to weight paint the gums and all the inner mouth of the character with the teeth there. So, I just divided the task in two and skinned the teeth separately. But now I'll join them by selecting them and then I'll shift select the face and do Ctrl J. When I open the mouth, you can see that the teeth are not deforming yet, and that is because they need to belong to the no M death group first, because that group is the one that tells which geometry deforms with the armature modifier in the head object. So I'm going to select all the teeth in edit mode and I'm going to assign that geometry to the no M death group. Once I do that, you can see that the teeth start moving along with the face. Next, I'll paint the eyebrows object, and similarly to what I did with the contours of the eyelids and of the mouth, I'm only going to paint this object with the horizontal bones, and not the vertical bones. After that, I'll also join this geometry to the geometry of the head. But this time, I'll do things in a smarter way, and I'll create the no M def group inside this object first, before I join it to the head. I will we'll assign the geometry to the no M def group, so that when I join this geometry to the head, the no M def group will be already assigned to this geometry, because it previously existed in this object too. When I join the eyebrows, you see that the geometry is already moving along with the face. Now I'll do the eyes, so I'll add an armature modifier, and in this case the deformation bone for the left eye is IDEFL. So I'll go into weight painting mode, I just roughly paint the group, and then in edit mode I select all the geometry and assign it to that group. Then I'll do the same thing but with right eye and with the bone IDEFR. And I got the eyes working. 
For doing the hair, I'm going to add an armature modifier and then I'm going to transfer the vertex groups from the head to the hair object. I need to do this because they are overlapping objects, so I need the same exact weights in order for the two objects to deform in the same way and not intersect with each other. So I'm gonna go into weight painting mode and I'm going to create the three vertex groups that I need for the head to deform by clicking on the bone and then roughly painting on the mesh. And that would be head def 3, head def 2 and head def 1. So once the groups are created, I'm going to select the head and front vertex group panel, I'm going to select head def 3 and I'm going to shift select the hair object and I'm going to go into weight painting mode and there I'll also select the head def 3 group and then I go to weights, transfer weights and as you see with the source layer option in active layer and the destination option in active layer the vertex group is transferred to the hair object. So now I'll go back to the head and I'll select head def 2 then I'll shift select the hair object and I'll also select the head def 2 group and I'll do transfer weights again and then I'll go back to the head and select the head def 1 group shift select the hair object and also select the head def 1 group and do transfer weights as you see with the active layer enabled in both options. So now both objects should have more or less the same deformation Here there are some vertices that weren't assigned to any group, so I'm going to correct that manually by painting them. And what you see here is the neck not deforming anymore, and that is because when I joined the teeth and the eyebrows objects to the head object, the geometry was modified. So mesh deformed stopped working because the vertex count changed. Therefore I'm going to select the head object and I'm going to press the unbind button in the mesh deform modifier and then again I'll press the bind button. Once the binding process is over, everything goes back to normal again. So now regarding the hair, I'm going to add a couple of bones for the side hair. Generally, when you add bones to customize the rig, those bones should be parented to the deformation bones. In this case, I'm going to parent the new side hair bones to the head def 2 bone. So I'm going to go into edit mode and with shift A, I'm going to create a new bone. Then I'll duplicate the bone and I'm going to call the first bone side hair 1L. And I'll call the second bone side hair 1R. As I have the X mirror option enabled, if I move one of the bones, the other one is automatically mirrored. So I'm going to move the left bone into position. And then I'll extrude a child bone with the E key. And I'm going to call the child bone side hair 2L. And the bone from the other side will be called side hair 2R. Now I'm going to parent the side hair 1 bones to the head def 2 bone by shift selecting the head def 2 bone and pressing ctrl p. Now I'm going to go into weight painting mode and I'll erase the influence from the head def bones from the side hair and then I'll paint the side hair bones in the mesh. So now I'm going to make these two bones B-bones and for that I'm going to enable the B-bone display option and then in edit mode I will reduce the radius of the bones with Alt S and in the deform options of the bone under the curved bones options I'm going to set four segments for each of these bones. As you can see there is some kind of twist between the bones and this is because they are not properly aligned in edit mode. So here in edit mode you see that the z-axis of one of the bones is looking up and in the other bone it is looking down. So I'm going to align those two bones to the global z-axis. I'll do this with Control N and select the global positive z option. Then I'm going to change the rotation mode to Euler 
and I'm going to select the ZYX Euler because in the Euler rotations you can think about the last axis to be kind of the master of the rotation so in this case I want the X axis to be the main rotation and then the Z axis is the other main rotation and finally the Y axis is the one that can cause a gimbal lock problem but in the, the case of the side hairs the Y axis won't be likely used so that is the reason why I'm choosing this Euler setup by the way there is a very nice explanation about Eulers and Quaternions in the Humane Rigging training videos so you can check them out so now you see that the B bones give the side hairs a nice curvature when they deform and that was the first customization for the rig now we're going to add a simple setup for the ponytail In this case I want to use only one controller for the ponytail and all these bones will be parented to the head def 3 bone as they belong to the top of the head. But first I'm going to move the side hair bones to the facial 1 layer. So now I'm going to go into edit mode again and with shift A I'm going to create a new bone and this new bone will be parented to head def 3. Then I'm gonna copy this bone and this last bone will be the actual controller of our setup and this controller will also be parented to head def 3. I will name the first bone ponytail def and the second bone ponytail control. So what I want to do with these bones is that the deformation bone should stretch to the control bone and it should also twist when I rotate the controller. But before that, I'm going to weight paint the ponytail with the bone. So now I add an armature modifier, I select blend rig as the deformation target, and I'll go into weight painting mode. So I'm going to weight paint the majority of the ponytail with the ponytail death bone, then I'll go into face selection mode and I'll smooth out the vertex group. And then I'm going to paint with the head def 3 bone, overlapping a bit the influence with the other group, and I'll also smooth out the influence of the head def 3 bone. And now I can start adding the constraints to the bones. So I'm going to add constraints to the ponytail def bone, but for that I will select the target of the constraint, which will be ponytail control. Then I shift select the ponytail death bone and by pressing shift, control and C I will add a constraint to the ponytail death bone and by selecting the constraint type from the list a constraint will be added and we will automatically have the target of the constraint assigned. So I will add a copy rotation constraint but I don't want the bone only to copy the rotations but also to follow the controller as with an IK constraint so I will add a damped track constraint and as you can see now the bone follows the controller but it also twists when I rotate the controller because the damped track constraint is after the copy rotation constraint and finally I'm going to add a stretch to constraint so that I can do the squash and stretch movement so I add the constraint and then I set up the minimum and maximum amount of volume variation I want and I also set the smooth option to 1 so that the motion is smoother. So now I'm going to move the ponytail death bone to the deformation layer and the ponytail control bone will be on the main body layer and also on the facial one layer. Now I'm going to skin the headband and for that I'm going to go into weight painting mode and I'm going to assign the head depth 3 bone as the main deformation so I select the whole object in edit mode and assign the head depth 3 vertex group to all the vertices but now you see that when I move the eyebrows there is an obvious intersection between the face and the headband. 
So instead of trying to weight paint the headband with the eyebrows, which would be an automatic but not so reliable solution, I will add two new controllers so that I can tweak the headband manually as I need to. So I'll name these controllers Headband Control L and R. And I will parent these two bones to Head Def 3. Now I'll weigh paint these two controllers. And as you can see, when I move the brow, now I can do small tweaks to the headband to correct the intersections between the objects. These two bones will also belong to the facial one layer. Finally, I will also add some subtle influence from the ponytail death bone to this headband object. And I will also add two controllers for the breasts of the character. So these controllers will go into the main body layer. And I'll parent them to Spine 3 Dev. In order for these controllers to deform the character, I'm going to weight paint their influence in the mesh to form cage. So we're good now. You have all the necessary knowledge to add custom bones to the rig in order to make it fit the needs of your characters. See you later.